Now, Peg Schaefer had to leave a little early, but she, she gave a wonderful introduction of you in absententia. <laughs> and you get to vote for Congressman Rush Holt. And many of you guys have met him, you've heard him. I've known him for a bunch of years, and you are so lucky to have him as your congressman. He is one of the smartest people I've ever met, and, and the most caring, or among the most caring. His, he goes to Washington not, not to, to get, in fact, he passes up accolades. I think I've told the story. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep talking for a while so that you, have, you don't get bored waiting for Rush and waiting for the other people to speak. I spent some time with Rush Holt at the Democratic National Convention. And it's, a, it's a, a, good, a good example of who Rush is, that he doesn't, he doesn't view himself as an important guy. And you may or may not appreciate that at the convention, it's hard to get back and forth to the proceedings to get to the convention center. But if you happen to be hanging out with a senator or a congressman, you get some special treatment. However, that doesn't happen if that special person is Rush Holt. Because Rush says to me one day, oh, Peg, you want to ride to the convention center? And I said, sure. I think I've scored. I think I'm coming in the back door with all the dignitaries, and I'm going to get an opportunity to not have to go through security, not have to wait in line. Guess what? Rush is driving a rental car with license plates um, from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> I don't know where he got them. No, the Illinois license plates. And no congressional insignia. And I said, he's driving. He's clearly driving. He's driving. His aide is sitting next to him. His wife's sitting in the back seat. And so we parked 10 blocks away. <laughs> because Rush Hall missed the conference call when they were going to tell him how he could get special treatment as a, as, a, as a congressman. He was doing the people's business instead. This is a guy who really is there representing your interests. And again, you'll hear him talk about the things he wants to accomplish. He's enormously frustrated right, right now. There's another part of this county that is running a gentleman named Upendra Chibikula, and Rush really wants Upendra to win because if he does, he's got some help on the hill, and maybe we'll get some things done. For those of you who do not know, this is what I fully expect will be our congressman come next year, and we are delighted to finally have a man of your stature in our town. I have been a Democrat for my entire life, and this is the first time I have the opportunity to have a Democratic congressman. And I'm delighted that you're actually someone like you, who I know who cares and, and takes care of the issues that we know are so important. So thank you so much for joining us here in Baton Rouge. And ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Rush Holt. Well, I, I, it's great to see you here. And uh, that's quite a record you've compiled. Uh, that is, <laughs> so let's uh, let's work to reverse that. Uh, I, I, I'm absolutely working to reverse it. I'm I'm pleased to uh, have the prospect, the opportunity uh, to represent the people of Bound Brook and and a number of other new towns. You know, the redistricting was not good for New Jersey. We lost a seat which loses, you know, costs us a little bit of clout in Congress. And it resulted in two Democrats fighting against each other uh, up north of here. Uh, two good, uh, you know, colleagues of mine, friends of mine, uh, who should have been able to continue uh, in Congress helping people. Uh, because they, like so many of the Democrats in the House of Representatives, actually believe in helping people. Uh, it's interesting, a, a while back, there was an, an op-ed piece in the New York Times uh, by some guy who said, well, members of Congress shouldn't do constituent service, you know, so-called casework. Uh, he said that, uh, you know, if you help somebody with their veterans, uh, health care or with uh, some issue on, on immigration, uh, you're only helping one person at a time, and that just suggests that the system is broken and that you're not able to, you know, those, those problems wouldn't exist if members of Congress really tended to their business. Uh, and uh, furthermore, helping people uh, is, is really just a, 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 in so many words, uh, buying votes. 
And, and I took real offense at that, and of course my staff really took offense at that, because we spend hours every day you know, trying to help people solve their problems. You know, whether it's a veteran who uh, lost, uh, you know, who came home from the Second World War and wasn't interested in hanging around for medals and, and celebrations, he wanted to get on with his life, and now, you know, in his late 80s is wondering, whatever happened to those medals, uh, that bronze star that, uh, that I earned? And he turns to his congressman. And it, it is a great feeling to be able to help people like that. I mean, I just actually just tallied up that I've, I've over the last, over this Congress, so since January of, of, uh, of 11, uh, I and my staff have helped uh, several thousand people. And these are actual cases where we've opened an official file to look into some matter or other. Uh, I've responded to uh, more than 50,000 letters and communications. Um, I've uh, worked on any number of issues, uh, such as, well, one that comes to mind, it's a little gruesome, but it's, uh, you know, it really, get, you know, uh, touches my heart. Uh, a woman came to me whose husband had been killed uh, in action. Um, actually, uh, his, uh, he had encountered an IED, an IED, one of these roadside bombs, and um, was dismembered. And they had the funeral with the partial remains. And she began to wonder, well, what happened to the rest of him? And the uh, Dover mortuary run by the Air Force gave her the runaround. And because she wasn't getting an answer, she came to me. We demanded an answer, and it turns out that uh, he had, that his remains were considered uh, not sufficient, not worthy of returning to the family, and so they were disposed of in a landfill. Uh, and uh, we were able to change things, to break this cover-up, uh, and it turns out this was not a single case, it was policy and uh, an unknown, an uncounted number, clearly in the dozens uh, or more, uh, have, have been treated this way. Um, it's, it was really offensive to me when we do something like that, to have someone write in the newspaper then, members of Congress shouldn't be engaged in constituent service. And, and I studied this uh, uh, op-ed essay for a little while, becoming progressively more angry, until I realized this was a person who believes the government is the enemy. He believes the government neither can nor should help people. <coughs> and I realized this is characteristic of the leadership of the House of Representatives. It's the characteristic of, uh, of, of the people who would you know, dismiss the 47%. It's, it is an idea that um, the government uh, is, uh, is, is this uh, uh, malevolent uh, organization. When I keep going back to the, you know, to the Constitution, where we banded together to form a more perfect union for a reason, uh, so that we could do things better together than separately, whether it's to provide for the common defense uh, or to improve the quality of life, uh, and to, uh, you know, rather than to say you're on your own to find a job. Together, we can say, well, let's have job training programs. Uh, together, we can say, 
let's invest in education or invest in infrastructure. Uh, today I had a campaign debate and uh, I, I, I reminded my opponent who, who seems to think that uh, there is no such thing as public investment. Uh, that's only wasteful spending. Now, he's actually an investment advisor, so he does believe that there's such a thing as private investment. <laughs> um, but, but I reminded him that going back to 1806, when the Congress authorized the construction of the National Highway, later became Route 40, um, it, it has said, we, there are things we can do together that will improve the quality of life. In this case, it would improve commerce and education for a road going from, from roughly here uh, out through Ohio, out through the Northwest Territories. And uh, that ever since then, whether it's the GI Bill or investment in education that follow, and science that followed the launch of Sputnik, uh, or the Apollo program, or any number of things uh, that we as a country have, have expanded the pie uh, by, uh, by doing things together. Um, that is really the democratic ideal. We build from the middle out, and we build. We don't say, you're on your own, you go build. You're on your own, I got mine, now you figure out how to get yours. If you want to go to college, says Mitt Romney, well, you may have to borrow the money from your parents. But. Pell Grants, no, that's, now last night he said, oh, I'm, I'm all for Pell Grants. Well, the Ryan budget, which I will also call the Romney Republican Ryan budget, which passed the House of Representatives with uh, complete Republican support, complete Democratic opposition, would actually reduce Pell Grants from, uh, we managed to raise those up to five, $5,500 maximum, they'd rate lower it to $3,000 and lower the eligibility for people to get those smaller Pell Grants. Uh, it is, in a sense, saying, you find your way to go to college. That's not a community responsibility. It's not our job to build opportunity. You find that opportunity for yourself. Uh, so, I, 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 I've been struck as the presidential debate goes on, as my own debate with my opponent went on today, uh, as the uh, so-called debate in Congress, actually there's hardly anything worthy of the name debate in Congress, as the ideological posturing uh, uh, takes place in Congress. I'm, uh, I'm really struck by what a difference there is between, uh, between the parties. And this, I think, is felt at every level. Uh, so uh, uh, that there is, uh, that, that in a sense, Democrats say, we're a community. We exist as a society and a nation in order to form a more perfect union. That we are always working toward greater liberty and equality for all. Uh, we're not there yet, but together we're getting there. And the other side is saying, you're on your own. Uh, and I see that in, in our governor, I see that in the Republican presidential candidate, in Mitt Romney. I certainly see it in Paul Ryan, whom I know well. We came to Congress together. And 
And uh, you know, it's actually it's a good thing that Romney chose him because that ties every congressional race in the country to Romney, to Mitt Romney, uh, because that budget, the Ryan budget, we, it, we have it in black and white how the Republicans in Congress voted. And no Democrats voted for that budget. And so th that is a, a political advantage to us uh, that he chose Ryan. But my point is, uh, this is very representative of what's at stake this year. And uh, so I, you know, I, Well, you know, I, I won't talk. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've heard from Tony and Will and Joan and, and uh, everybody here, but I would like to draw a line connecting all of these, uh, all of these races. Um, it really, it really is about whether we want to build a community or not, whether we're in this together or not whether we are uh, optimistic about making the quality of life, uh, and by the way, Vinny too, uh, and I want to draw a thread through all of this, um, that, we're, that we're, we're, um, we're optimistic about making progress toward a more perfect union, rather than uh, running for the, uh, the, the shelter of our gated neighborhoods or running for the, the, uh, uh, the, the shelter of our giant SUVs. Um, it really is, I think, a, uh, a critical moment in our country. And, uh, and I think it runs from top to bottom. So I'm delighted you're engaged in, in this fight. Uh, because it's an opportunity to seize what we, uh, you know, what we've always held so dear, what it is that has made this country great. When I meet with students, I, I tell them it's not by chance that this country has prospered economically, socially, culturally. Uh, you know, for two centuries, getting better and better, stronger and stronger. Why is this? Well, yes, we have natural resources. Yes, we had oceans that for the first century more or less protected us, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't that. It was that we banded together. It was that we had this ingenious constitution. It was that we had a commitment to liberty and equality that, that overrode individual differences, that overrode temporary setbacks, uh, that overrode uh, the, the, uh, the inefficiencies and inequalities that, 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 that the real world presented us uh, because we had these ideals. Uh, and it is, uh, this is the, uh, an opportunity to uh, rededicate ourselves to those ideals and to seize them. So, uh, I'm, um, as, as you can tell, I, you know, everybody says, oh, this is the most important election. Uh, uh, but this really, this really is the most important election. <laughs> I can think of. You know, when, when somebody says, I can dismiss 47% of people, that was not a momentary gaffe. That's where he lives. That's the world he lives in, where he can dismiss 47% of Americans and say, I don't have to worry about that. So uh, I'm delighted to work together with you uh, on this. Uh, delighted. I, I'm, I'm really I'm getting to know Boundbrook. Uh, I think uh, Tony can tell you we've stopped in shops and knocked on doors and just walked around. Um, and, and I've done it uh, several times now. Gotten to, I'm getting to know a lot of folks here, and I'm really happy to have uh, the, the opportunity, with your help, 
of uh, representing Boundbrook starting January 3rd and giving Karen a Democratic representative <laughs> in Congress. <laughs> Um, one of the things that um, Congressman Holt was talking about was the way we share things and the way we make sure that we take care of each other. And one of the things that has happened with Boundbrook over the last um, several years is, of course, we're known for our flooding issues. And um, what a lot of people may or may not know, um, there are probably people in this room are familiar with it, but we need to spread it around. We need to tell people that that the flood control that happened in Bound Brook had, happened as a result of the American Recovery Act, which I know that Congressman Holt voted for, and of course is, is really a, a cornerstone of one of the things that the President has done for, for people throughout this country. We were one of the few projects that was actually shovel ready when that money came out. And, um, and as a result of that, we are going to be flood free and um, I am really, really excited about it. We know that we had a kind of had a preview. <laughs> we kind of had a preview of it last uh, last August for uh, Hurricane Irene, who came through and whose volume of water came through the river at pretty much the same volume as Floyd, with nearly the 42 feet. And instead of having 12 feet, which means that you would be evacuated out of this window. Right. Um, instead of having that down here, well, we only of had lives lost. Right, that too. Uh, but we had we had two feet, yeah. and that was only because it wasn't finished. Down and we knew it was as bad because I've wow. been in I've been in Middlesex. Right, right. And, and actually, it was higher in places there than, than Floyd had been. Yes, so, because of the way some of the some of the changes have been made. Well, and I also want you to know. Uh, you know, even though I'm not yet your representative, I have been meeting with the Corps of Engineers about this project and and the other flood projects uh, along the rivers here, uh, uh, so that we can get them moving along. Yeah, and this is this whether, is whether or not we can have another stimulus bill. There's good reason to have further economic <laughs> stimulus from the federal government. And remember, but if we right, give them a Democratic Congress, we could end up with one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's, that's where we are. And those of us in Boundbrook and in the neighboring communities that are so affected by those kinds of things, I mean, my house had $40,000 worth of damage. I am, I am delighted and really thrilled that we will have someone who comes into town handing us a check or showing us a check who actually voted for it instead of someone who didn't vote for it, who just took advantage of the photo op. Because the Republicans do that very well. So I am um, really grateful that you're here. I don't know if you have time to take a few questions or if you're really kind of I, I would have to head off, but I'd be happy to hear, uh, uh, you know. I would, I would uh, mention from, in, from you, in what's Hurricane, on your mind. In Hurricane yeah. Irene, yes. um, Pete and Anne Ruggieri, who are this couple yes. right over here, oh, yes. yeah. they had pretty substantial damage. They had a tree fall on their house in the middle of the night. Oh. And oh. they, were, they were essentially homeless for several months. So that was soggy ground and wind, not flood water. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. But uh, you have you have lots of people who are in this room who are very desperately affected by these these waters as they come through this town. So uh, please, if there are any comments, hearing none. What what are some of the other towns in this area that you're talking about? Oh, sure. I mean that. I've well, 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 well. First of all, let me uh, uh, describe the twelfth congressional district. Um, <coughs> The district that I currently represent, about 720,000 people, uh, goes from the Delaware River to the ocean, from Trenton to Rutgers, roughly speaking. It's a more complicated line than that. Uh, it's, carefully, it's a carefully drawn boundary line there. Uh, but it's now been redrawn uh, as New Jersey goes from 13 to 12 congressional seats. Uh, to run more north-south. So the 12th district will have most of Mercer County, uh, all of southern Middlesex County, so Old Bridge and Monroe and uh, north and south Brunswick and so forth, uh, quite a bit more of Somerset County now, and parts of Union County. So the district goes from well, Scotch Road in Hopewell to Scotch Plains, and from Plainfield to Plainsboro. Uh, so it's, um, 
uh, a uh, still <laughs> still <laughs> what did I say? But it's, still, no, it's still a great district, um, but different. Uh, and so, uh, although uh, Greenbrook is not in the district, uh, Middlesex, Don Ellen are, and they have so, uh, and, and, uh, have some of the same flooding concerns that Boundbrook has had. Uh, never, not quite as devastating historically, but uh, uh, but the floods seem to be getting worse. Um, you know, I've, I've been representing a large part of Hunterdon County uh, that has been flooded by the Delaware River with, you know, 300-year floods in the last decade. Mm. Uh, and you got to stop calling them 100-year floods at some point. Uh, and now the modelers aren't sure or won't say that this is because of, 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 of runoff from development paving over the porous ground, but that must have something to do with it. Um, and so it does seem to be getting worse. And no one will say that any particular storm or flood is the result of climate change, but you really have to be an ostrich with your head in the ground not to see a pattern here. And and, and to deny climate change. Now, we do have people in Congress who are denying climate change or denying if, if maybe it exists that humans have anything to do with it or maybe if humans have anything to do with it that there's anything we can do about it. Uh, so it's... Uh, um, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I, I think we are just going to have to make the investment to protect the people uh, who live in flood-prone areas. Right. We can't say, you're on your own, you move. Well, where are you going to move when you can't sell your house? Right. Right. Uh, exactly right. uh, we can't say, you're on your own, you build the levees. No, uh, you, you can't deal with a, a 12 foot or 15 foot rise, uh, you know, with, with your own little bulldozer. Uh, this requires engineering on a national scale. And uh, so we've got to do that. Uh, but they would say, well, we can't afford that. We're, didn't you know we're a poor debtor nation? Uh. And Social Security is bankrupt, and well, we'll just have to privatize it. We'll have to tell you you're on your own for your retirement, uh, surely you're smart enough to outsmart the market with your investments. Um, no, that's, that's not the way this country has gotten great. Um, so. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Thank